With the release of iOS 14, not only did they give us new widgets, new custom loadouts you could create, but also gave us a lot of useful additional features that I'm surprised Apple didn't touch on during their presentation. Nor are there people actually covering this. So in today's video, I'm going to go ahead and cover everything that I find extremely useful in iOS 14 as quickly as possible. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and start off with the new camera feature because in my opinion, this is probably the most useful one to definitely know about. If you quickly go into your settings and go into the camera tab, go ahead and, and enable prioritize faster shooting. And what it does basically allows you to shoot photos faster. Then if you're rocking a 6S, you may have noticed that you can now switch the resolution and the FPS right there on the corner of the display. When shooting a photo, if you swipe up for these additional tools, now we actually have a plus and a minus, and this will basically lock the exposure level to the exact percentage instead of swiping with your finger. Now if you hold the volume rocker, it will actually start recording a video on the photo mode. And not only that, what was originally exclusive on some iPhones now is compatible on all the other devices. If you actually hold down the shutter button, you can actually slide to lock and it begins recording and just tap the middle to end record. Another setting to definitely check out and take advantage of is back in the settings and right here in the camera tab, enabled mirror front camera. Now what this basically does whenever you take your selfies, it looks exactly like that it displayed on your screen. Now another very useful app, of course, is Safari. I'm sure we all use it. It also got a couple nifty new features. And unless you haven't noticed, Apple gave us a lot of privacy controls. Whenever you activate your front facing camera or if there's an application that uses it, you get a green icon. Whatever application is utilizing your microphone, if you're answering a call and stuff, you get an orange icon. And now in Safari, if you tap these little A buttons right here, these little icons, there is now a new privacy report. In here, it will basically expose any ad trackers that are tracking whatever you're doing on Safari. It's always really interesting to see what's going on and who really is trying to track you. Oh, and if you ever find yourself on a foreign website, you can just tap these little A icon. You could be able to translate it right there. And then in terms of some previous shortcuts, if you hold this, you still have access to clear all these tabs. Tap the top to quickly go all the way on top or tap the little scroll bar to quickly control the scroll. You still have access to all that. Well, now let's say you don't want Safari to be your default web browser. Well, now you can actually change this. Currently, at the time of making this video, Chrome, DuckDuckGo, Edge, and Firefox are fully supported. So download either of these web browsers. We're just gonna go ahead and use Chrome as an example. Go into your settings, go into the Chrome, and right here you can, you'll be able to select the default web browser now. So whenever you click on an online link, it'll take you to that web browser. Now, of course, iMessage is very likely the most used application that you probably use as well. And I got a couple of nifty features. So for my contact privacy, of course, it's gonna be mostly blur, but just bear with me. If you slide, you could pin your conversations right here. And you could click and drag them like so. You can have up to only nine, and you can also pin group conversations. With group conversations, as long as everybody's on iOS, you'll be able to actually edit the group conversation name, change the photo, buy an emoji or import your very own photo. Now on the home page, in case you didn't know, tap and hold on these little dots allow you to skip through pages. If you go all the way out, all the way to the right, this is your application library. If you want to clear up some space, if you 3D press and you hit remove app, if you move to the library, the application is still installed on your phone. It's just now in this library right here, freeing up some home space space. If your friend wants to know what kind of app you have, just force press and share app and just enter their contact information. It's just like that. If you have an Apple Watch, by launching the Apple Watch app, if you actually tap on the watch face that your buddy requested for, hit the little up arrow, you can also send it to them like that as well. Now, if you really enjoy the app library, so next time when you install an application, it's not gonna show up on your spring board right here. If you actually quickly go into your settings, select the home screen and right here, Newly downloaded apps, select app library only, and now they're only gonna be downloaded and displayed in that little category library list right there. So if you like to keep your home screen clean or hide some applications, that's how you do that. And then of course, you could tap and hold and bring them back if you want them here. And then of course, if you go into wiggle mode, here's your widgets. Pretty much this is kind of self-explanatory, but I'm gonna go ahead and quickly go over it as fast as possible. 
there's a bunch of different widgets you can select from some of these support these applications down here but if you select one if you slide over there's different styles that you can select and not only that some of these are stackable if you select a stack widget like this but then you decide it has too many stacks some of these you don't like you can force press edit the stack and eliminate the ones you don't like or add more later or change the rotation entirely or disable the auto rotation as well everything is just basically personal preference but that's the quick loadout the only interesting one that's worth mentioning is probably the battery widget because this will also monitor the battery life percentage of all your devices that are connected to your phone, especially the Apple Watch, but it will also display your AirPods and the AirPods case accurately. Now Control Center, you may have noticed it got slightly overhaul as there's a lot more widgets and some of these are actually really interesting. If we, if we quickly go into your settings, go into Control Center, an interesting one I want to talk about is Announce Message with Siri and sound recognition what these two allow you to do is was announced message siri whenever you're wearing like supported headphones like the one with the apple ship like beats or airpods when you enable this when you receive a notification like a text message siri will automatically read the message this is perfect to enable whenever you're going outdoors you're running outdoors and you don't have your phone on you and you get an incoming message siri will actually read it out loud but there is times this may become annoying Let's say, for example, you're doing research and you don't want to be distracted by anything or anyone and you get an incoming message. If you go into your control center, you could disable and turn it off right there completely without having to go into the earbud settings. It's just a quicker way to turn this on and off. Moving along, it's sound recognition. Sound recognition is really interesting. If you force press on it, you could check mark the kind of sounds you want your phone to notify you. So right now I have mine set to doorbell. So whenever, let's say, for example, I'm in the backyard, or something and someone rings my doorbell my iPhone will actually identify the sound and will send a notification to my phone and my Apple watch so whenever I get back inside the house because I was uncertain if I heard a doorbell I could look at my phone to confirm so you get the general picture of how this is useful and there's some very interesting ones like the water running and still in the control center settings uh, if you don't have any home automation stuff like smart home appliances, just disable that. And now whenever you launch your control center, it gives you a cleaner layout if you don't have none of these to begin with. Now this next one is an additional feature, but in my opinion, this be this was cool at first, but it became annoying. You'll know what I mean. It's the back tap. Apparently, if you tap the back part of the phone, you could let your phone to do different things. You could enable this by simply hopping back in your settings. If you hop in accessibility and go down to touch, scroll down to back tap turn this on and you have the choice between two taps a double tap you could toggle it to do app switcher control center home or screenshot as a fine example i'm going to go ahead and select screenshot and you could let triple tap to do other things so control center this is fine so now whenever i double tap the back part of my phone it'll take a screenshot and if i triple tap it'll launch control center now give this a try if you don't like it just go ahead and reverse the process to disable it. Now in case you haven't yet noticed, but whenever you're using your phone and you receive an incoming call, there's this new shorter card animation. And if you swipe up, you can just ignore it completely like that and you'll notice there's a phone call icon on top. So in case you wanna pick it up later, you could just tap the top and you could answer the call or deny it or whatever. Now, new for iOS 14 is we finally have Picture in Picture. This used to be an exclusive feature on iPads, now it's available on here. So the basic controls of Picture in Picture, you can move the block like so, you can adjust the size like this, or you may slide it out away completely, and it'll still play the audio. If you wanna bring it back up, tap the little arrow. And you could make it full screen by double tapping or tapping on this icon right here in the corner. You may also pause and play it. Now. Some applications, third party apps like Netflix and stuff actually work with picture in picture, but in case you run into a video that doesn't support it, like YouTube for example, if you actually watch a video and play it on Safari and swipe up or tap the home button depending on your phone, it will automatically take it into picture in picture mode. Now in case this doesn't happen automatically to you, if you happen in your settings and just type in the search bar picture in picture on top of here. Enable start PIP automatically now whenever you actually swipe up or tap the home button It'll do it automatically. Sometimes this feature is disabled for some reason And then now whenever you FaceTime somebody you can actually multitask because picture in picture is fully supported as well So those were some of the new settings some of the things you adjust I guess some tips as well 
on some cool shortcuts you could do take advantage of ios 14 and i know for a fact we barely scratched the surface i'm telling you guys there's so much new stuff that apple added for ios 14. so feel free to comment down below if you know any additional features and i'll give you a shout out as i'm pretty sure this is gonna turn into a long series so stay tuned for part two and if you're wondering how i created this video into a wallpaper you can go ahead and watch this video over here as i walk you through pretty much the entire process and how to do it and then that video right next to it that's just a video that youtube is recommending specifically for you feel free to watch either or again thanks so much for watching remember subscribe like and i'll catch you in the next one see ya